Welcome to today's episode, My Most Memorable Miracles. I wanted to talk about some of the things that have happened recently that made me feel really grateful and really loved, and some of them actually made me feel shocked. For example, not last Saturday, but the Saturday before that, I drove down to Arizona. I guess it was on Friday. So, not last Friday, but the Friday before that, I drove down to Arizona because the next day was the Taylor Swift concert, so I didn't want to drive down on Saturday. And then that following week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we were going to be on a cruise with my family. We got on the cruise around 2 p.m. and had dinner and just kind of hung out. We took a nap. All the teenagers took a nap, you know. It's interesting when you go on a vacation with your family when everyone's older because everyone likes to nap. And when you're younger, people want to do stuff and go play games and you know, constantly be active and stimulating your brain. I don't know if that's right. (laughs) Just constantly be doing stuff. And the teenagers all just wanted to sleep and nap in the room. And I was one of them, even though I'm not a teenager anymore. Woohoo! Anyway, so that being said, I drove down on Friday and I got there late at like 1.30 a.m. So it was pretty late, but I had worked that morning and so I wanted to be able to sleep during the day. I didn't want to just like go right after I had worked and I had school. So I worked, went to school, came home, slept, woke up, packed, filled my car up, got food and left. I made it all the way down there. It's about 400 to 500 miles, just depending on which way you go. Driving by yourself is scary in and of itself. I don't love it. I like being alone by myself, but not driving. I can be alone by myself in my room or at work. (laughs) Driving is hard because you have to be constantly watching the road and constantly active so that you're turning the right way or you're making sure you're not running into someone or you're making sure you're stopping if their brake lights come on and so on. It is fun to be able to listen to podcasts or audiobooks or music because I don't really do that when I'm just at home. I don't know. I'd rather watch a movie or watch a show than listen to an audiobook or a podcast. So I save those specifically for when I'm driving, but being alone, driving is hard, especially when you get tired because it's dangerous. I mean, it is so easy to just veer off the side of the road if you're not paying attention and I know 100% more times than one that angels have taken the wheel because sometimes you like kind of wake your you wake up or you shake your head and you're like shoot I don't remember the last like 30 seconds (laughs) and that happened a few times but it happened more often on the way back and then I stopped and I bought An energy drink to stay awake, which I've never had a monster or anything like that. And so I just ended up buying one of those little five-hour energy drinks. I'm not doing that again. Because when I drank it, my heart started beating. Well, first of all, I was stupid. And (laughs) instead of drinking half the bottle like it suggested, which I did at first, 20 minutes in, I'm still like falling asleep at the wheel. And I refuse to pull over even though I know I should. I just have such a hard time wasting time. I have such a hard time pulling over and taking like a 10 minute nap when I know that's just going to make me more tired. And I can't sit there and sleep for an hour and then drive again. That just, anyway, I can't do it. And so I bought a little energy drink and 20 minutes later after drinking like half of it, I was still exhausted. So I decided to drink the other half. Well, an hour later, I was not happy about that decision because (laughs) My heart was beating really fast. My skin felt really warm, which is said as a side effect because your blood flow increases. And I just felt kind of jittery and I did not like it. So from now on, I will probably just buy a soda or something because the five hour energy drinks are not the move. Anyway, <laughs> so back to driving down. I got there around 1.30 a.m. and went to sleep. And the next day, my mom, two sisters, and me all went to the Taylor Swift concert. And I ended up parking my dri- my car in the driveway, and my dad asked me if he could borrow it to run an errand, and I said, yeah, sure, of course. And so he drove it to run an errand, and while we were at the concert, 
it was like 523. And he calls and he's like, Kyra, I don't know how you got down to Arizona because your right rear tire is in the worst shape I have ever seen a tire before. He explained later that it was bulging, there were wires sticking out, and it was basically to the donut. Like, it was seriously damaged and should have blown. In fact, he ended up pulling up to, I think, a Firestone, but I don't remember exactly where he went. But he sweet-talked the woman into changing the tire and putting a new one on it before they closed at 6, and it was like 525. Because she was like, eh, I mean, we could. But he was like, please, 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 we, we're going to take this on a cruise tomorrow. We need it bright and early. We won't have time to fix the tire. Can you please just replace it? And she was like, okay, I guess we can do that. So anyway, really nice of him to do that. There were several miracles in this event. Several. Not just one or two or three, but several. One of them was that I made it down to Arizona. My dad said that wheel was in the worst shape he's ever seen. As in, I should not have made it down without that wheel blowing. But it didn't. It it was fine. I drove all the way home and I was safe. I did accidentally run off the side of the road. Kind of, sort of. It was like still the road, but really bumpy and patchy, but not the road. I don't know. That doesn't make sense probably at all. But there is a reason that happened. There was a police car on the side of the road. And so I thought I was going into the other lane to get out of the way. But apparently there wasn't another lane, so I went off the road. But anyway, I ended up pulling over really quick because my emergency lights went on all of a sudden and my car started panicking. And so I started freaking out. I called my dad. I was like, Dad, it's doing this. And then suddenly it said I needed an oil change, which made no sense because my little sticker on the top right of my mirror said I still had like 1,500 miles before I need another oil change. And he was like, you know, they probably just didn't reset it. I wouldn't worry about it. And I was like, okay. So I got back on the freeway or the highway or whatever and kept driving. And there you go. I made it home safely. The point of that is since I went off the road, even to even more rocky terrain, my tire should have popped and it didn't. It should have blown. And so that was a miracle that I made it all the way home to Arizona. The second miracle was that my dad borrowed my car and noticed because... It's very possible that he could have driven one of the other cars. We have three cars. We have a van, a minivan, and then an Elantra. And that is what the kids drive. So my sister drives it. I used to drive it. I had it for my first year in college until my sister turned 16. And then I ended up buying a car. So now I have my own car after FSY I did that. But anyway, my point is he could have taken another car, but he decided to take mine to run an errand real quick. And that's when he noticed. He asked me afterwards, he's like, you must have noticed that the car was not driving good. It was driving awful. And I was like, yeah, I guess I noticed, but I just didn't know. I don't know. That makes me sound so naive and stupid, (laughs) but I just don't know things about cars. I don't know. And so I just wasn't sure about why it was driving so bumpy, but I just, like I said, I didn't know. And when you know better, you do better. And I didn't know better. So I didn't do great. Anyway, it all worked out because he noticed he was able to take it somewhere. And that leads us to the next miracle. The next miracle is that they only had one tire. And most people know that when you replace one tire, you want to replace two tires. You're replacing one on the back, then you want to replace both of them on the back, or one on the front, then both of them on the front. And even if you can, to replace all four of them if, you know, it needs it. But they only had one tire. The lady was like, well, we only have one tire, but there's a place 20 miles down the, not 20 miles, 20 minutes down the road, about 10, 15 miles away that has two. And my dad's like, this car will not make it another 20 miles maybe one I don't even know if that like it's a miracle I even got here he was like just put that tire on please and she was like okay it was a miracle because my dad figured out that the other tire on the other side still has about 5,000 miles left and so we would have replaced a tire that didn't need to be replaced and the tire was not exactly cheap because my dad wanted to make sure to get a good tire And so basically, because there was only one tire, we saved money, which I'm really, really, really grateful for since I am saving every penny for my study abroad chip. So there you go. There are three miracles right then with this car. Then the fourth miracle related to my car, because of course, my car is (laughs) where all of the miracles are stemming from because it's had all these little issues and problems. 
is that we were driving to California the next day, and my dad was in my car, and my brother was in my car, and then the other kids and my mom was in the van to kind of space out so more people had more room. As I was driving, I kept hearing this really high screeching sound, and it kind of sounded like it was from one of my tires or something, and so I started feeling really panicky. But my dad was asleep, and my brother was also asleep, and so I didn't know what to do. And so as I was driving, I started basically streamlining and praying as hard as I could. Please, Father, please, please, please help me figure out if I should stop or not. I've been taught to make a decision first and then pray about it. And so I said, okay, I'm going to make the decision that everything's okay and I should just keep driving. Please, please, please help me know if this is the right decision. And so I kept sitting there like anxiously waiting and saying, please, please, please help me know. Please help me know. So then nothing happened. And I was like, okay, that means I got to switch my, switch my decision. So then I switched my decision and I said, if I need to stop, I'm making the decision to stop within the next however many miles and tell my family that something's wrong. Please help me know if that's the right decision. So I kept sitting there and sitting there. And then, I don't know, part of me was just like, you didn't wait long enough. And so then I switched decisions again, because in reality, I really didn't want to stop. So maybe I never actually did decide to stop, but I said I was going to. And I feel like I would have if that has been what I was told to do. You know, if I had felt the spirit about stopping, I would have. But I switched my decision again, and I thought, I'm going to keep driving. Everything's going to be okay. Please help me know that this is an okay decision, that everything will be okay. In about two to three minutes, which... It's not that long, but if you're sitting there and you hear this high screech sound and you're freaking out that something's going to happen or your tire's going to pop or your car's going to go out of control or something, two to three minutes is a long time. (laughs) So much can happen in two to three minutes. But two to three minutes later, I finally, finally, finally felt that sweet piece of this is the right decision. You can keep driving. And so I felt so grateful about that because I was panicking. I was conflicted especially because I had just had all these problems with this tire and already experienced a miracle I was like who knows maybe my tire is just gonna pop (laughs) you know but it didn't and I also got confirmation that everything was gonna be okay so I was really really grateful for that the fifth miracle that I wanted to talk about today was that on the cruise ship I lost my ring I wear one ring and I've been wearing it since I got it when I graduated middle school which not really I just moved on to high school but it was kind of like this I don't know coming of age thing anyway our grandma gets all the girls a little ring so anyway I got this ring when I was about 13 or 14 so I've had it on for several years a long time because I'm now 20 so I think about seven years maybe six or seven years and I wear it all the time. I just really like it and it's really simple and it fits my finger really well. I wear it on my right hand because I don't want to give any boys any ideas that I'm taking when I am not. (laughs) And so I wear it on my right hand and I just wear it all the time and I really like it. I shower with it and everything. It's just a cute ring. It doesn't have like a jewel at the top that can fall out or get damaged or something so it's okay to wear. Anyway, I woke up one morning, got dressed, got ready and was out in the hall waiting for my some of my family to come out to go up to breakfast. And I think I have a nervous habit because I oftentimes will use my thumb and I'll kind of like rub over my finger where the ring is. And I think it's a nervous habit or something, but I do it a lot. And I didn't realize that I did a lot until I'm not wearing my ring. And then I'm like, oh shoot, I actually do that a lot because I'm like, wait, where's my ring? I woke up and I guess nervous habit or just a habit is I started rubbing my finger and noticed my ring wasn't there. And I started panicking. I was really nervous that I had lost it, that it was somewhere in the cruise ship, that I wasn't ever going to find it, that maybe we dropped it on Catalina. But then I thought, you know, no. You touch your finger all the time. You would know if you dropped it somewhere. It's got to be in the room. So I was like, okay, it's got to be in the room. So I went back into the room, and luckily no one was ready, so it's not like anyone was waiting for me. And I started scavenging everywhere. And once again, I'm streamlining prayers up to heaven, just sending them, just full full sending them up again, again, again. It's just constant stream. I'm saying like, please, 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 Father, help me find this ring. Please help me find this ring. This ring means a lot to me. I really want to find it. It will make me have a better day. I'll feel less anxious. Please help me find my ring. Please help me find my ring. 
So I keep looking around, I have my flashlight on, my three siblings are asleep, still looking everywhere, everywhere. And finally, I pick up the mattress off the little loft bed, and there it is underneath the mattress. Grab it, put it on, immediately I am overwhelmed with relief and peace and gratitude. And I just felt so seen and loved in that moment because I really wanted to find the ring and it really mattered to me. And then there it was and I found it. I think oftentimes we forget that Heavenly Father loves us. How often do we have miracles in our lives that we don't notice? Had I not lost my ring, I wouldn't have been reminded that he loves me. But also another miracle is that I noticed it was gone And then that I found it, and I found it so quickly. And then additionally, the miracle of making it down to Arizona with my tire being in one of the worst shapes he's ever seen a tire before. I mean, that's saying something. My dad worked for Enterprise Rent-A-Car for about eight years and saw a lot of cars, a lot of tires, and he said that my tire was one of the worst shapes Which, I mean, I'm just saying, it's like a big deal. And so the fact that I was able to get down there is huge. But something that's interesting to me and something that seems to be an important lesson that I can take from this is that I think miracles happen and we don't know they're miracles yet. How many things in your life have happened that could be a potential miracle? I mean, as I was driving down and I made it home, That was a miracle, but I didn't know it was a miracle until after my dad found out that the tire was in rough shape. How many things in your life are happening right now? And this, it just, I don't know, it's just everyday things. You're not thinking anything of it and then realize, oh, wow, you know, that was a miracle or that was a tender mercy. Because after the fact, you are shown that it was a miracle and that he helped you out. For example, how many times do we... I don't know, trip and not fall and break our arm or something. And we could have. Or how many times do we make a stupid decision and something doesn't happen? Or another example with my car, because of course, I was driving home, like I said, to Utah this time. And there was a car that suddenly braked in front of me. And I'm normally someone who follows two to three cars behind. And so normally I have like enough time to slow down, but... I don't know exactly what happened, but I just slammed on my brakes because they slammed on their brakes and they were getting really close. And then I, you know, pushed them even harder or like lifted up and put them back down. And it happened, I mean, I hate that I did this to my brakes, but it was either that or run into the car. And just for like a split second, my brakes started being like, anyway, I stopped. I am sure there was probably like three to five feet difference between my car and their car. It was close. It was a miracle that I did not hit into them. To this day, I have no idea why they suddenly stopped. I mean, cars in front of them also stopped, but it was so frustrating. I got so mad. I was like, why did you stop? But then I was like, Kyra, you didn't run into them. It's a blessing. Let it go. And I was like, okay, I can do that. But anyway, it was just frustrating. But Also another miracle, and so I let it go and just took a deep breath. Those are my miracles last week, and I'm really grateful for them, and I wanted to share them, so there you go. The word of the day today is going to be fortuitously. It's an adverb, and it says by chance rather than intention. By lucky chance, fortunately, accidental. I don't live life believing that things happen by chance or that they're accidental Or that, you know, they happen by chance rather than intention. I think that they are intentional. And I think that they are divine design. That Heavenly Father really does watch and love us and care about us. And these little coincidences that happen in our life matter. And are important to Him. And that the details of our lives are important to Him. Fortuitously, an adverb. I don't want to live my life fortuitously uh, noticing or... Seeing things in a light, maybe a fortuitous light, was that, would that work? I always laugh when I try to use these words in a sentence because I think I do not use them correctly. I'm, <laughs> I just full send and hope it works, but it's going to be funny when one of you is going to be like, that was not right at all. <laughs> but anyway, the word's fortuitously and it's an adverb and it means by chance rather than intention, fortunately or accidental. 
I'm glad that I didn't get an accident. I'm glad the Heavenly Father was by my side. I'm grateful that I was able to find my ring. I'm grateful that my tire didn't blow. And I'm grateful that my dad noticed before we left on a cruise. Overall, I am super, super grateful. And I feel extremely blessed to have been protected and safe. I just remembered there was one more surprise. Not surprise. There was one more tiny little miracle that I didn't know was a miracle until after. But as I was driving down to Arizona and right before that I had started my big long trip, I felt the spirit say, you're going to be safe on the way home. And I felt so grateful and I didn't think anything of it mostly because I've been praying a lot lately and asking for safety and just support and knowing things are going to be okay. And I've been really blessed in feeling a spirit and knowing that things are going to be okay. As a family, we have a tradition to pray before we go on a trip. And so I prayed and asked for safety on my way down and I felt you're going to be safe. And so I was super grateful about that and didn't think anything of it. And now I look back and I'm like, wow. I was told I was going to be safe, and I was safe. He kept his promise. He kept his word. And I know that he always keeps his word. Quote of the day. I am going to share a few because these look good. By Jean DeLay... Oh, shoot. I'm going to butcher this last name. Jean de la Bruyere. I'm going to say that so wrong. (laughs) He said, or she said... This is embarrassing. I don't know. They said, (laughs) out of difficulties grow miracles. Then another one said, miracles come because you believe. I like that one. Miracles come because you believe. I also think that miracles happen every day and we just don't notice them. So I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to notice them. I'm grateful that my dad was able to help me. Before we drove to California and my pop tired on the way there because that would be awful. But everything worked out, and I'm forever grateful. I'm grateful I got home safely because I really did feel like I was falling asleep. And I'm grateful that the five-hour energy drink woke me up, even though I felt like my heart was going to beat out of my chest. (laughs) At the end of the day, I just feel really grateful, and I'm grateful that I'm still here, and I'm grateful that my heart's still beating, and that we had a good time at the cruise, and I was able to find my ring, and really grateful. So... My invitation to you is to look for the miracles in your life. Look for the potential miracles in your life. Because God is not someone who does things by chance or helps people be lucky. He loves us and he thinks about us all the time. So, I know that to be true. Thank you guys so much for listening. Embrace imperfection. Find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. Do 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 do